Kiddos, in today's video, we are going to start um, a series or a couple of videos at least on moles, which are really sort of the most important topic in chemistry one. And the reason for that is because almost all of the math that we're going to do at some point revolves around the idea of moles. If we're going to convert one chemical to another and go from grams of one chemical to grams of another chemical, we have to go through the idea of moles. If we balance equations, we're going to be talking about moles. Um, and so we need to sort of discuss in this video what moles are and, and really why do we need to use moles. So the rationale behind using moles is that moles are a way of allowing us to count things by weighing. Um, and, and the reason that we need to do that is because atoms are ridiculously small. So like the biggest atoms are around 500 picometers. And if you remember um, your staircase, so if you remember the metric system staircase, I'm going to draw a few stages here. So remember we had, let me go up a little bit more, we had milli, and then three steps down from that we had micro, three steps down from that we had nano, and then three steps down from that, we would have pico or picometers. Um, and so that's really incredibly small. I mean, we're talking about a billion steps removed from milli. So we're talking about a trillion steps removed from the base unit. And here's the other difficulty that goes along with that is that our vision, like human vision, only reaches down to about 400 nanometers. So what that means is that to be able to really see atoms, even with the strongest microscopes, um, we would have to have about a thousand atoms lined up together. Now there are things like electron tunneling microscopes and stuff that we can see sort of like bumps from where atoms would be, but we can't actually see atoms themselves. And so we can't count them in the sense of like, hey, I'm going to grab a pair of tweezers and like one, two, three, four, like there's no functional way to make that work. And so instead, we resort to what we often do when we're counting really small things or things that are in really massively large quantities, and that's that we're going to do it by weighing. This is pretty common practice in a lot of fields in that, like, say, we're not going to count how many packing peanuts or something like that that we've loaded into a container, but that we know that there's a certain weight of them that we need in there. Um, and so there are a lot of things that we have in our society that we're going to essentially measure or count how much product is in there by weighing it rather than by counting the individual parts. If you go to um, get some potato chips or some cereal, those things are packed by weight. And that's why when it seems like, you know, when you open up the box, there's not a full box of stuff. And that's because they know that it's going to settle during shipping. And so they weigh it to keep each box the same amount of stuff rather than filling it up to a certain point where that wouldn't work. And by the way, for potato chips, the other reason why there's not many chips in the bag is because they got to fill that bag with air or all the chips would get crushed. I know it seems like a ripoff, but that's actually why it's there. I know, completely unnecessary for the chemistry lesson at hand, but still probably uh, valuable information. So what moles are going to allow us to do is moles are going to allow us to take really small, tiny, infinitesimal things, which are atoms, gather a whole bunch of them together into one term that we'll see in the next video we can turn into mass so that we can mass or weigh them and be able to figure out how many of these things do we have. And that's what moles are going to allow us to do. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to talk about what a mole is and how um, and then the number that's associated to it. And then in the next video we'll talk about the mass part of it. So remember in the last video for conversion factors we said that uh, a dozen is 12 of anything, that a score is 20 of anything. And so these are terms that we use and then a, they, they are associated then with a number and that number can apply to a, a wide variety of things. In fact, almost an infinite number of things that it can apply to. We can have a dozen and we know that that is 12 of whatever thing we're talking about. If I have a dozen students in class, I have 20 of them or, or 12 of them or I could have a score of students in class which would be 20. If, I had a, if you had a pair of teachers, then that would be two teachers. So a mole works sort of like that. And so here's the definition of a mole. One mole is equal to this really big number. One mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of whatever. Okay, now I'm going to tell you that this number has a special name of its own, um, and you're going to use it all the time. This number, 
is called Avogadro's number. And the reason that it's called Avogadro's number, he was a scientist and a chemist and a physicist, and he did a lot of studies of gases, and we'll see later on, he's, he's the guy that sort of proves to us that we've got a standard molar volume of things. And so this number then gets his name attached to it. This number is how many of anything are in a mole. We're going to talk about a mole in terms specifically, obviously, of chemistry things. So we're going to talk about atoms and molecules and stuff like that, and I'll list a couple here in a minute. But it could apply to anything. We could say that there are a mole grains of sand um, in the sandbox, which would mean that we're Avogadro's number of grains of sand. We could say bananas or stars or Twinkies or whatever. It would mean this, just like a dozen always means 12, a mole always means Avogadro's number of that particle. Okay, so what are the particles? Well, the particles, and what we call the particles are representative particles. And what does that mean? Well, representative, representative particles means the particles that we're looking at in a given scenario. So what would that be for us? Well, the obvious ones would be atoms, okay, uh, molecules also. How would you know the difference? Well, if we were talking about a single element, then we would be referring to atoms. If we were talking about a compound, then we would be talking about molecules. And if we wanted to find atoms, we would see how many atoms were in each molecule. And then the molecules themselves would be the moles. And we'll, we're going to work some problems with that. You'll see that. Um, we could also do formula units. And, and at this point in the year, we don't really know what formula units are. But essentially, they're molecules for ionic compounds. Ionic compounds don't really have molecules. Um, they have a lowest whole number ratio, and we call those formula units. Um, it could be ions, or we might just sometimes just say particles, okay? We might not know what we're talking about. We might not know if it's the species that we're talking about is a molecule, um, if it's a compound or an element, so we don't know if it's molecules or atoms, but we could wager maybe that it was particles um, of something that was happening. So, for instance, we could say in Rutherford's gold foil experiment, they were firing particles out. Maybe they fired X number of moles of particles of those alpha particles, okay? So it could be any of those things. And it doesn't have to be those. Remember, these are the ones we're probably going to use in chemistry, but it could be all kinds of different things. So it could be any of those things. It doesn't have to be those. Which one of them is it depends on the problem that you're talking about. So if you're talking about molecules, if you're talking about a compound, then the representative particle you need are molecules. If you're talking about an element, um, then we're going to need atoms. And so we're going to work a couple of problems to see how this goes. What's important here is that everything we're going to do here, this is an equality that is then going to allow us to do some conversion factors. Okay, and so we're going to walk through a couple of those real quick 